to today are in that process to be in the city of God, but their hearts are strangers to Christ. Are you a stranger to Christ? Amen. We are not to be strangers to Christ. Christ is there for us. As he said in his word, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. But there are times, you know, your hand on your heart, there are times that we say that we don't know the Lord. The only time we ever call upon him is when we're in deep trouble. Then we met come to know Him. But other times when things are going good, do we still know Him? Amen. Do we still get on our knees and pray and thank Him for every day? Amen. Amen. God is not just there for the bad times. He's always there for bad times, but He's there for good times as well. Amen. Amen. So when we are in the good times, we are to praise Him and thank Him. Amen. How many thanks Him when you woke up this morning and found that you were still alive? Amen. Amen. You were still breathing. Amen. You had breakfast. Amen. You had lunch. Amen. And this afternoon we have some veranda. <laughs> Thank you. It's not by man alone. It's God alone. It's the Bible. Thank you for your job. Thank you for your employer. That you are still employed. And so, oh, said, even in this recession time. Because there were many, many Filipinos that go back home. Because as you know, if they go home, to Europe, to America, they're there for a purpose, to earn money for their family, to send money back home because of the state of the nation, of our nation in the Philippines. So let's pray for them. Let's pray for the workers, the overseas workers. Pray for them. Pray for their employers. They don't abuse them. Pray for them that they'll always be in a job. Mm-hmm. As I said earlier, there is power in faith. Power. Amen. Power that you cannot understand. Power that so will secure a man's job or a woman's job that won't be sent home. So secure that they will bring healing and deliverance. Amen. 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 So let's not just ask God for when we're in bad times. But let's thank Him and ask Him Amen. and continue to be with His presence every moment of the day. Before we go to bed tonight, let's thank Him for today. Let's thank Him that He will guide you tonight. That He will charge an angel of you to watch over you. Or you sleep soundly in your bed. And he will wake you tomorrow morning to give you a brand new day. Amen. The day, as we know, is full of new blessings. Amen. Not the days warmed up, not the days that have not been left over, but brand new blessings. Amen. 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 Every day. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Raise your arms to him and thank him. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing to my family, to my life. Thank you for my employer. Thank you for my wages. Thank you, Lord, for the rice I've consumed today. Thank you, Lord, that my rice keeper is always full. Amen. Thank you. It is only the Lord that can do this, not man. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Verse 15, he says that if you walk righteously and speak uprightly, he that despises the gain of oppression, who shakes his hands from holding off bribes, who stops his ears from hearing of blood and shuts his eyes from seeing evil. The person really knows the Lord. The righteousness is going to be their lifestyle, which will be obvious. In other words, when a person comes to Christ, they are gloriously changed. Otherwise, they haven't really come to Christ. Have you come to Christ? Have you read 2 Corinthians 5.17? It says, Therefore, turn to the Bible. Bible study time. Take Corinthians 5.17. Let's make this our prayer this afternoon. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, are you in Christ? Amen. Right. You are a new one. Amen. And what's happened to the old things? Behold, all things have become new. Now things are of God. Amen. Who so has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. We are a new creation. All things have passed away. All your old habits have gone. If you're in Christ. Amen. Amen. Examine yourself this afternoon. Lord, I want to be in Christ. I want to be. Lord, allow me 
to pass up the old things, the bad habits. Lord, I want to be a new person. Amen. That's your promise this afternoon. Amen. So we are in Christ. You can survive, you can say and do what is right. Don't use your power to cheat the poor. And don't accept bribes. Don't join with those who plan to commit murder or to have other evil things. Brothers and sisters, that verse 15 describes the kind of person that God will accept and bless. By ourselves we can achieve these qualities of character. They can come only as we trust Jesus Christ in grow in grace. It is only as we walk with the Lord that we have the real security and satisfaction. Praise God. Uh, verse 16. He shall dwell on high, his place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread will be given him, his waters will be sure. In today's terminology, dwell on high refers to being raised up together and made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You can read that in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. The munitions of rocks refers to Christ. Paul said that the rock was Christ in 1 Corinthians 10 14. The bread that is given is the bread of life, which is the true bread. Jesus Christ is the true bread. Amen. The sure waters refer to the mighty baptism of the Holy Spirit. Then you will be saved. You will be secure as if you were in the strong fortress. You will have food to eat and water to drink. Amen. Amen. They are the promises of God. Let's follow Him. Let's trust in Him. Amen. This wonderful, great and mighty God that we have. So in conclusion, I would say this. In holiness, God is highly exalted above all His moral perfection and stands in contrast with evil people and nations. God is perfect and sinless in all His motives and actions. So he is in the perfect control of his power, of his judgment, his love and his mercy. His holy, holy nature is our standard for morality. Our God is also a punishing God. Because God is holy, he requires his people to treat others justly. He promised to punish Israel, Judah and other nations for their faithfulness, immorality and idolatry. True faith has degenerated into national pride and empty religious rituals. Our God brings salvation. Because God's judgment is coming, we need a saviour. No person or nation can save without God's help. Christ's perfect sacrifice for our sins is foretold and portrayed in Isaiah, who all who trust God and be, be free from sin and restored to him. Our God is the Messiah. God will send the Messiah to save his people, his second coming. He will set up his own kingdom as the faithful prince of peace, who rules with righteousness. He will come as the sovereign lord, but he will do as a servant who will die to take away the sins. And lastly, our God is a hope in God. Our God promises comfort, deliverance, and restoration in his future kingdom. The Messiah will rule over his faithful followers in the age to come. Hope is possible because Christ is coming. Amen. So this afternoon, brothers and sisters, let us arise. Let us arise now and we shall have a word of prayer. Amen. Praise